Okay, so hopefully this is a quick review for you. The uh, basic set of identities that we're going to work on today, um, sine x, uh, secant is 1 over cosine. These are things that hopefully you're familiar with, but just to jog your memory and have them available. Um, and one more identity we'll work with, um, cotangent is cosine over sine. So we just want them somewhere where we can refer to them today. So let me show you what the idea behind trig identities is. Oh, sorry, did that, uh, everybody have a chance to write those four down? Okay, so trig identities, what we're trying to do is we're trying to prove that one thing is equivalent to another. So let me show you an example and it's easier to kind of get where we're going from the example. So for sine x, secant x equals the tangent, if I wanted to convince you that this was true, then one thing that I could do is I could try to show you how sine x times secant x can be made into the tangent. So for example, I could write this as sine x times 1 over cos x, which is the same thing as sine x over cos x, which is the tangent of x. So in that way, they look different, but they actually would have the same values. If you were to graph them, they would have the same picture, and uh, they would have all the same values for whatever value of x you put in. So um, here's the first rule for proofs. We've got to get it out there real early. We're trying to prove that two things are equal. And this is weird because it's new to you. Normally, everything that we've handed you so far, we've said, these are equal. Here's how you move them around the equal sign. You can't think that way when you do proofs, because you don't know that they're equal. You must prove that they are. So for example, sometimes there's temptations for people, like in this next example, they say, oh, well, why don't we move the sign to the other side? And I'd say, that'd be great if you knew that they were equal, but you're trying to show that they are equal. So you are not allowed to cross the equal sign or any math that you do which is dependent on an equal sign will not work. You would end up losing marks in your proof because you're assuming it's equal before you've proved it. Does that kind of make sense? So first rule, do not cross the equal sign. You must work on the left side or the right side or both, but do not cross. Okay, so see if you can figure out how to turn that expression tan x cos x over sine x into 1. Okay, so the first examples that we're working with, we're really, we're just trying to get used to putting identities in. So the first set of identities, that's all we're going to use. Um, that's, you can answer the question just from them. So for example, one thing I might want to do here is I might want to, well, first I'll put a little divider here. I could probably start by saying okay, tangent, oops, sorry, forgot an x in there. It should be um, tan x. I'm just going to rearrange it a little neater, and I'll talk about why I did that in just a second. So I could call that tangent x cotangent x, which would be 1, right? Anything times its reciprocal, that would be 1. So when you do a proof, you really owe it to your marker. Um, and they will call you on it, okay? So I really mean this. You owe it to the marker to make it as presentable and understandable as possible. If you skip steps because it's obvious to you, it may not be obvious to your marker why you skipped a step. If that's the case, your marker may say, I don't believe that this is true anymore because you've just jumped so far ahead on me. So for those of you hot shots out there that like to do your questions in one or two lines, it will haunt you in this unit, okay? Take your time, make a nice little presentation, show all your steps so that there's no confusion of what you did. So some people might say, how did you go from tan x cotangent x to 1? If there was any confusion, it means I lost a mark. So it might be better for me to actually add an extra step here and say, okay, well we could do, oops, got to get the pen back. We could go like this instead and say that's like tangent x times 1 over tangent x. Those would cancel out and I would get 1. So some of you might be going, oh, now I understand that proof, okay? You gave me full marks this time, you took off marks last time when I tried to skip a step, okay? So 
that's the thing with proof. You really don't cross the equals and make it as nice and easy to follow as possible. Yes, Anthony? In both of those examples, I noticed that it would be true regardless of x. Uh, yeah, any value of x, it'll equal 1. That's correct. Yeah? How about the first one? So for any value of x in the first one, sine x, secant x will have the same value as tangent of x. So if you put in, say, pi for x, secant pi times sine pi will be the same value as tangent pi. Okay. okay. So finally, um, one more there. Cosecant times cotangent equals secant x. Um, I'll let you just, if you haven't, I'll give you an extra minute to see if you can finish. Okay, so you may not be quite there yet. That's okay. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit so I've got a little more working room. Apparently, I was feeling very, very green and environmentally friendly that day, and I really crammed it into one page. So uh, I'm just going to have to backtrack some of that off just to make room for this. Okay, so to show that cosecant x over cotangent equals the secant, um, what we're going to do is, well, it may not look obvious, but there are a couple of changes that I can make. For example, I can make cosecant, I can turn that into 1 over, uh, I'm going to do it on diagonals. I go 1 over sine x divided by um, cos x over sine x. Okay. So I've just made my two replacements there. And there's one technique that you, uh, I'm going to go over lots of working with fractions techniques. But one that you're going to like is when you have these complicated fractions, one thing you can do is take the lowest common denominator of the top and the lowest common denominator of the bottom. So we think about it as two separate pieces. Okay, both of them uh, have a common denominator of sine. So if I multiply on top by sine and on bottom by sine, then that means what I'm going to end up with is the denominators disappear. Okay. So it's kind of a neat little trick. It means I'm going to get 1 over cosine x when I multiply through. And I haven't done anything illegal because I did it to the top and bottom. Okay. So 1 over cosine, that is the definition for secant x. Okay. So at this point, most of you are probably feeling like it's either super easy or you need to review your fractions, right? Because so far all we've done is a lot of fraction work. So that's all I want to try here. There's no proofs in this, these three examples. I just want to make sure that uh, some of those fraction skills are still fresh in your mind. So these next three, that's what I'd like you to do. Just see if you remember how to manipulate fractions. Okay? Okay, so let's see uh, how you're doing with your fraction skills. This, you know, it, might, it may seem a little silly practicing this, but I don't know exactly where everyone in the class is at. When you multiply, it's the top of the fraction with the top and the bottom with the bottom. Okay. Um, when we're doing some of those multiplications, we also might simplify at the same time. So sine on top gets rid of one of those. Cosine on top, cosine on bottom. That means this whole thing would turn out to be just sine x. Okay. Um, and then finally, this is one here that uh, you know you probably want to put a star beside it to remind yourself because it's awful and ugly and terrible looking. It's probably one of the worst kinds of fractions you could encounter. But it's because you haven't done fractions for so long that you forget that what this actually means is divide, right? A fraction just means divide. So I'm going to show you how this looks a lot friendlier if we write it as a division. This says the sine of x divided by the cosine of x divided by the secant of x over cosecant of x. Now do you know how to handle that kind of a fraction? Anybody remember how to do that kind of division? Yes. It's the trigonometry that's the problem. Sure, but right now we can work on trig later. Just want to hear what's the uh, what's the process when you're dividing? Yeah, tell us what that means there. Yeah, you flip and multiply. So that means we go sine x over cosine x times cosecant x over secant x. So sine times cosecant, that's 1. Cosine times secant, that's 1. So that whole thing looks terrible. It really just means 1. Yeah. So um, anyways, 
We're going to move on from fractions. If you're having some fractions problems, then um, we'll get lots of practice here. But uh, I'll have some time to go over with you at lunch or after school if you want to practice your fractions. Okay. So let's try some real proofs here. Now, I don't mean real because they're difficult. I mean real because there's a little bit more than one or two steps involved. So let me just show you here before we go further. Um, when we do this, you're going to want to have some good space on your page. I'll tell you right now on the provincial exam, if you had one trig proof, you get a whole glorious 8.5 by 11 inches to do the proof. A whole page. So, um, as I said, I must have been feeling very green and environmental to shrink it to a, an inch. But, uh, anyways, the point is, I'll show you what it's going to, the style that we're going to get in the habit of. I'm going to rewrite this because I've not got, I want my example to be very clear for you. So, this would be secant x plus sine x. And one plus sine x cos x. over cos x. So this is the format that we're working with on the provincial exam. There would be a big bar right between the middle of it. Why do you think there's a bar in the middle of those two things? To remind you not to cross, right? So that's nice. They, they remind you don't go over the equal sign. And we've been working so far with one side. There's nothing wrong with you saying well, I'm doing some of this identity. Uh-oh, now I'm stuck. Well, why don't I go over here? Oh, now I've got the answer and be done. You can do that. You can work a little bit on the left and a little bit on the right as long as when you're done, the left side is identical to the right side. You have a complete proof. So I'm going to let you try doing uh, this one here, and I'll do it on the board in, in big, uh, with a lot of space there just so it's a little clearer. Let's see if you can do this one. So... Um, if you kind of think a couple steps ahead in these trig proofs, then you can make life a little easier. There are several ways to do this question. Um, I'm going to show you one way that I did it, and then maybe I'll see if anyone else has a different. I looked at this, and one strategy that I like to use is I like to take the ugliest side, the side with the most garbage that I can prune down and make it look better, because that's what we've done a lot of in math class, right? How many times have you heard simplify, right? Simplify is something you do a lot. So sometimes a good strategy is to say, well, this side here is probably more complicated. Maybe I can simplify it. So one way I could do this is I could separate those fractions. Okay, so all I've done is instead of one fraction, I've just turned them into two pieces. This piece here is equal to the secant of x, and cosine would cancel out. You'd end up with the sine of x. So left side equals right side. Okay? Some, some of you may have decided to go on another route. Maybe you decided to, to, to go on the left side. Okay, so I'll do this other proof in green. Some of you might have said, okay, I'm going to change this to cos x and sine x, and then I'm going to make a common denominator. Make sure you're clear and you show the person how you got a common denominator. And now I've got 1 over cosine x plus sine x cosine x. And I can combine my fractions. Both proofs are worth full marks. Both are entirely correct. But, I mean, one of them is a little simpler if you think a little bit ahead as to what steps are going to be involved. Okay, so green proof or red proof, both would get full marks. Okay.